Hello, everyone, and welcome. Today, I would like to talk about the alpha beta proming for the minimax algorithm in the tic-tac-toe game. This is a fairly exciting topic, so let's get started. This video assumes you have some basic understanding of the minimax algorithm. Uh, and here's a brief refresher. So there are two rows, a maximizer, choose the maximum among all the possible leaf scores and minimizer choose the minimum among all the possible leaf scores and they call each other in turns as you um, if iterate through the game from the node the pair node all the way down to the leaf node for simplicity in this video i will use the orange box to denote maximizer and the blue box to denote minimizer so this node here is uh, maximizer. And for this trial maximizer node, beta is the best score, the parent minimizer, which is not shown here. The parent minimizer node was guaranteed to get. If the trial node is a minimizer, alpha is the best score, the parent maximizer node was guaranteed to get. Initially, the value of alpha is set to negative infinity, which is the worst condition for maximizer. On the other hand, beta is set to positive infinity, which is a worse condition for a minimizer. After alpha and beta are initialized, we will begin with node A, and then we put a x in the first empty square, and then that call a minimizer function in node B here. And the variable alpha and beta are passed down from node A to node B, as you can see here. Because the node B is not a terminal node, so it continue to fill in an empty square, in this case, an O in this square, and call a maximizer and generate a node C. And again, alpha and beta are passed down from node B to node C. Next, node C fill in an X in this empty square and generate a terminal leaf node which is a draw and with a score equal to zero. Because node D is a terminal leaf node, so a score propagate and ripple back to the parent node, node C, maximizer node, and the score is now update to be zero, and alpha is the maximum of alpha and best score, so it's also zero here. And this continue ripple back to node B with B being a minimizer, so it update beta as a minimum of beta and best score. So beta is updated to be a zero here. Because node B has another empty square, so it branch out to the maximizer in node E. And the alpha and beta variable are passed down from node B to node E. Next, node E generate a terminal leaf node, node F, which will win for X. Therefore, the score is one here. And the score from node F ripple back to node E, and the score update to be one, and alpha update to be one. Here, alpha is larger or equal to beta. This condition is a critical condition for alpha beta proving. And this is because the parent minimizer is was already guaranteed a best score zero by visiting node C. So the score here, as soon as uh, node E sees a zero, he know the parent minimizer will never go down this way. And therefore, if there were more branches from node E, they will be trimmed by beta cutoff, and we don't need to compute the other branches anymore. And the score from node E ripple back to node B. But there's no change because the score is already the best score. And this continue ripple back from node B to node A and update alpha and the score to be zero. The whole subtree is completely visited when we fill an S in this square. Next, we'll explore the subtree when we fill an x in this square. And again, the variable 
alpha and beta are passed down from node A to node G. And node G is a minimizer and it fills a O in this square. We generate a terminal leaf node, node H. Node H is a win for O, therefore a score of negative 1. This score, negative 1, ripple back to node G and update the best score and beta as well. Here, a condition critical for alpha beta pruning is again satisfied. When this critical alpha beta pruning condition is satisfied, we know that we don't need to compute any further branches from node G anymore. This is because the parent maximizer was already guaranteed a best score, which is zero in this condition here. And so when it's so a score negative one, it will never come down this way. And because it can go to visit the other left-hand side branches that it was already guaranteed of. One thing I would like to point out is that in alpha beta priming, the child node, such as node G here, did, did not visit all the terminal leaf node, for example, the node I here. Therefore, its best score may not necessarily be the best global score, unless it's negative one here, for example, or positive one for a maximizer. In general, in alpha beta priming, the trial node did not visit all the terminal leaf nodes. Therefore, its best score, as well as its parent's best score, may not necessarily be the global best score. Here are some more general examples for a maximizer and for a minimizer. And because of this effect, in it ripples back all the way to the parent node. A very high level parent node here can have a best score uh, to be zero, but actually its global best score is one. Okay, so that's all I would like to talk about for alpha beta priming for the minimax algorithm in the t-tactile game. Here's some summary for the alpha cutoff and beta cutoff. Please feel free to pause the video to read the information in some detail. I hope you find this video to be useful and hope to see you next time. Goodbye.